Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This is Tony Hager. You're watching Global Wrestling News, one of the most respected wrestling tournaments on the senior circuit. The Alexander Medved International in Belarus wrapped up this last weekend. Nathan Tomasello, Tyler Graff, and BJ Futrell represented the U.S. on day one. Tomasello captured a silver medal at 57 on the first day. He was defeated in the finals by Bek Renev of Belarus 5-1. Both wrestlers were aggressive off the start, but Bek Renev took a 3-0 lead in the second period. When Tomasello pressed the action, his opponent scored a counterspin behind takedown for a 5-0 lead. Tomasello forced to step out late but was unable to get to his offense. Tomasello was down on his feet the first couple matches, Kazakhstan and, and Ukraine. I mean, in the semifinals, he stopped a two-time junior world medalist Ivanov of Russia, 6-1. to one. So he had two tech falls there leading up to this. Offense was there. He just kind of fell flat in the finals. Right. He was pushing the action, you know, for the most part, but wasn't able to pull the trigger in the last one. It's almost like we saw two different wrestlers. Yeah, the confidence was there, and then we didn't see in the finals. But, you know, that's just a part of his, you know, growing pains. All right. The two other U.S. wrestlers competing on the day placed fifth. Dropping a bronze medal match in the evening session was Tyler Graff at 57 and B.J. Futrell at 65. Yeah, I would have loved to see an all-U.S. final. 57 kilograms. Graf and Futrell are, are in the middle of the road here for United States at both these weight classes. The, you know, this experience, these are the type of tournaments that the United States, USA Wrestling needs to be pushing on these guys. All right, well, on day two, the U.S. secured two medals with Kendrick Maple winning gold at 61 kilos and Don Bradley took bronze at 125. With little international experience, Maple ran through the bracket taking out Kuat of Kazakhstan in the first round with the 7-0 shutout, moving on to the semifinals. That's where he met up with Furzaliev of Russia, who he outlasted with a 10-7 win. We go to the finals now. Maple went head-to-head -head with Russia's Grigorev, and Maple emerged victorious with a 2-1 victory to claim the top spot on the podium. Now, Maple Tony has been competing in stateside tournaments and events, but not much internationally. How big was this victory for him? Yeah, I think... Um the biggest thing for him was he's been in the Nebraska room now for a few months, really kind of opened his eyes to the potential that's out there. He won the U.S. Open already right. this year, and he was you know, was on course and maybe making the world team, end up getting second at the trial. So this has to show him that he needs to get out there more and wrestle international guys. Being in that room with Green and Burroughs definitely is paying dividends at this point. Well, let's take a little closer look at 125. Bradley defeated Paznak of Russia in the opening round 2-1. We go to the quarters. He had one of the his more impressive matches of the tournament, defeating Zertas Vizvili of Georgia. He finished fifth in the 2015 and 2017 World Championships. Well, Bradley came up short in the semis against Ukraine 6-0, sending the American to the bronze medal bout. Bradley scored on a four-pointer from a double leg and stepped out to win the bronze at heavyweight. All right, next up on GWN, we'll welcome back NCAA champ Anthony Robles on the program. He's after the break, thanks to Pure and Clean Sports. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting and you should too.
All right, welcome back. Anthony Robles, the 2011 NCAA champ and graduate of Arizona State, will be inducted soon into the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame. Robles is a three-time All-American and four-time NCAA qualifier at 125, also finished his ASU career ranked eighth in wins at 122 and 10th in dual wins at 53. He set an ASU career record for bonus point victories at 92 and tech falls at 47. Here to discuss his incredible journey through the sport is the Hall of Famer himself, Mr. Anthony Robles. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. I'm extremely honored. You know, it's an honor to uh, represent my home state. And from what they told me, I think there's there's only two other wrestlers that got in, have been inducted. So I'm extremely honored. The criteria to be uh, nominated and inducted, uh, there are basically one of three. Arizona native, obviously, is important. Um, so you are a true Arizonian. <laughs> I believe that's the right word. <laughs> but you've also needed to make significant contributions to the athletic community in the state of Arizona. Um, you've been doing that seemingly all of your wrestling life. Where did that, and I may have asked you this before, but perhaps it's changed. Where did all of that drive come from? Uh, you know, really, it was a combination of things, but it always it always started with my mom. You know, um, when I was born, obviously born missing my leg, my mom from day one, she never let me use it as an, use it as an example or as an excuse, excuse me, as an excuse to, to just not set the bar high in my life. And so, you know, she was always pushing me just to chase new things and, and just to uh, see what my own limits were, you know. And so once I got into wrestling at 14, um, that's what I loved about the sport right, out, right away. You know, it was about seeing what your limits were, pushing yourself every single day. And uh, I just continued with it. And, you know, I was blessed with some great coaches who really uh, believed in me and, and supported me and, uh, you know, took the time to work with me. You know, uh, coming in as a unique case, not knowing wrestling and them really not ever having the opportunity to teach someone missing a limb before. Uh, it was a learning experience for all of us. And I'm just happy that, the, you know, they're patient and, and willing enough to, uh, to spend the time with me. So you are now a motivational speaker. Uh, and a, quite a good one, by the way. Also, one of the great voices and faces for the big, tw uh, the Pac-12 network. Um, you, you seemingly have seen opportunities for yourself uh, where others might not have seen that. Um, you have a, an incredible belief in yourself, and I got to believe that's how you were raised. Uh, never really seeking uh, a no, but always seeking a yes in anything you wanted to do and try to do. Is wrestling a, a, a good basis for that? Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, that's one thing, you know, people ask me, I always tell them that I, I look at challenges like a, a question mark. You know, it's a question to me in my mind. It's not it's not if I can do it, it's how can I do it? You know, what do I need to do to do it? And that falls right in line with wrestling as well. You know, you go out there on the mat, every wrestler is unique. You know, that's one thing that caught my eye right away. Some we, we got tall wrestlers, short wrestlers, stocky. You know, it's about using your style, using your God-given abilities in finding a way to get the job done, you know, finding a way uh, to get your arm raised. And, uh, you know, I'm just very grateful to the sport because it's really, it's taught me so many lessons that um, can really just go across, go off the mat, you know, in my life. They can translate to my life, things that I can apply it to, and really lessons that my mom taught me from day one. Wrestling came in and really uh, kind of echoed that, you know, it amplified that. Now, I'm not even sure how I'm going to ask this question, but your opponents are drilled and schooled and have practiced and have committed to wrestling a wrestler or an athlete with two legs. It would seem that even through your disadvantage of having one that is giving you an advantage because they're still wrestling a guy with two legs, only you have one. So did you see that? And, and was there a real benefit, for example, in your match with uh, Matt McDonough, okay, uh, at the championship. It seemed as if he was still, in his mind, wrestling a two-legged wrestler. Would you say that's true? Oh, absolutely. And that's that's one of the things, you know, we, we mean, you know, myself and my coaches and my teammates, we figured out as I went through, as I progressed. You know, there were going to be some disadvantages, but there are also going to be some advantages. You know, one thing we learn is that, you know, I can prepare for any style of wrestler that I'm going to face in the wrestling room. You know, I can pull certain teammates, train with them, drill with them and figure out my opponent. They're not in that same place. You know, they can't train with someone who's missing a leg. And so that was something that I really kept in my mind uh, when I was competing. 
you know, and that's really that really kind of helped me to form my style of wrestling of being aggressive from the whistle, you know, trying to go out and get a takedown quick, going for those near fall, fall points fast because I didn't want to give them time to figure me out, you know, to, to start to kind of put, put put the puzzle together, basically. Um, so, yeah, that definitely was something that did become an advantage for me, just knowing that, you know, the guy across town or across the country, uh, he can't train for me like I can train for him, you know, and so that gave me some extra confidence going out there just knowing, you know, I have that in the back of uh, in my back pocket. Well, I got to tell you, we have been very, um, uh, very interested to see your career as it continues to blossom. You mentioned you're the third representative from the Sun Devil Wrestling community to be named to the prestigious Hall of Fame, as you have been. Uh, 1967 NCAA champ, Pro Football Hall of Famer Curly Culp was inducted in 2002. And in 2014, it was longtime supporter of ASU Wrestling and former wrestler himself for Arizona State, Art Martori. You're in pretty rare uh, company right there. Uh, I'm extremely honored. You know, I'm, I'm very aware of both of those those men. You know, they're, they're heroes in, in at ASU and in the wrestling room. And I just remember walking in every single day, you know, to the wrestling room for practice and seeing uh, Curly Cope's banners in there. You know, the, the numerous awards he's won and just looking at him and just thinking, you know, I want to be like that one day, you know. And, and so uh, I'm just extremely honored to be able to uh, uh, be inducted into this Arizona Hall of Fame and just represent my state and uh, the wrestling community and my, my Arizona State University. So I'm very honored. Man, Tony, when, when he won that national title, I mean, just to see him on the big stage with one leg was something special, proof that anyone could be a star in this sport, and he did it yeah. in, in such a spectacular fashion. Yeah, I remember seeing you know him going over his family, just the – the emotions on their on their oh, yeah. face it kind of took everybody back a little bit you know as a former wrestler wrestling these one-legged wrestlers I mean you go into it you're almost mentally broke already sure because you, you have to change your complete you know wrestling stance everything has to be changed and you're they're, still shooting on that leg yeah well and they're and they're going into it where they're comfortable and they they already have more confidence than you it takes it takes a special person to be able to go out there in front of you know, m you know millions of fans and be able to compete like this and uh, inspirational, you know, inspirational. Anthony Robles, we need we you know, if we get another guy, one guy like that, NCAA's that would, that would help us out. All right, we're gonna take a short time out. Thanks to our friends at Nike Wrestling. Brandon Wright's up next. Stay tuned. You'll find out where he's gonna be a coach. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com.
Indiana head coach Dwayne Goldman has announced the addition of Brandon Wright to the Hoosiers staff. It's been a breakout summer for Wright, who reached the 61-kilo finale of both the U.S. Open and the World Team Trials. We talked with former Grandview standout about his rapid rise in U.S. rankings and becoming the first athlete at the Indiana RTC. Super blessed. Um, super grateful for the opportunity um, for the Coach Goldman and the rest of the guys on the staff, you know, Angel and um, – Coach the game, you know, welcome me open arms and all the college guys have been everybody's been super supportive for my transition in, so I'm feeling blessed. I think uh, all the guys on the team, you know, even the university, it's kind of feel like a there's a new wave coming to Bloomington. You know, um, we have no seniors on the team currently. You know, all the guys, the older guys are juniors, so we'll be returning a lot of guys next season. And um, I think a lot of those um, those young guys are ready to lead and. They're excited for, you know, me coming to the staff, Andrew coming to the staff. You know, um, they're excited for the new things. You know, it's, it's not um, common for the lower division guys to, you know, make these national teams, these world teams. And I kind of want to be, you know, one of the first or, you know, guys to bring that to the table um, for the freestyle senior level. And also with um, the lifestyle of Graham, you know, everyone, it's no secret, you know, Mitchell started the championship lifestyle and, it's 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 very contagious, you know, when you're around the program, you know, when, you know, Mitch is a very um, intellectual man and getting people motivated in different ways. And the talks he would he would speak to us before practice always stuck with me. You know, it was always something that was enlightening. The, that wasn't just for wrestling, but was for manhood. So I always carry that with me. I don't know if he's the most overlooked athlete of all time, but he's surely in the top five. Yeah, I mean, I hate I hate to say it, but it's because he wrestled at NAI. That I means just that as a division, you know, D two, D two, D three, JUCO, all these divisions, they they're just not on the division one levels. So when you're when you're thinking of how big the wrestling fan base is, it just gets smaller and smaller with these divisions. You know, if you're a D one wrestler and you go into freestyle wrestling, it's kind of just expected. So to see Brandon Wright have this great summer, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty awesome for those lower classes to get that recognition. Well, I think you're seeing the NAI really rise above it because the the old opinion was before Grandview is that those guys weren't D one or even D two level quality, but now Grandview is making uh, making hay while the sun is shining, and they're doing a great job. Well, we haven't seen guys like Deleg since Delegne have come onto this you know senior circus. So kudos to Brandon Wright for for sticking with it. I think a lot of people at that level just assume that they can't go to the next level. I'm not sure why that is, but guys like Nick Mitchell are the reason why they're sticking around and they're pursuing their sticking dreams. Sticking around, pursuing their dreams, and accomplishing them. Another guy with Grandview ties, Cody Caldwell, has been hired as an assistant coach at SDSU, South Dakota State. Caldwell was a four-year starter and team captain while at Northern Iowa and spent last season as a graduate assistant at Grandview. I'm, I'm pumped, to be honest. I mean, words can't describe how, how excited I am when Coach Bono got a hold of me. Um, to ask me to apply for the position, I was I was ecstatic, you know. Um, hearing things more more than just the wrestling, I mean, they have a lot of a strong uh, administrative support with uh, Justin Sell as their their AD, and they've got it going on right now. You know, they're an up and coming program. They they're we're, we're preseason number thirteen in the country, so I mean, we're 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 looking to finish higher than that, obviously, but. <clears throat> It's about what these kids are doing on a daily basis, coming in, working hard. And, you know, I've been here for a short period of time, but <clears throat> to see the way they go about their everyday lives, it's it's not a surprise why, they, why they're having success. Coach Bono and Coach Reader, they work their tails off. And, you know, you do that, a lot of times good things happen and good things are happening in Brookings. You mentioned you got to coach under Nick Mitchell at Grandview. Uh, talk about a powerfully positive person. Uh, what was that year like? Oh, it was it was amazing. I mean, being able to be um, learn from a guy like Coach Mitchell who has who's got it on and got who's got it going on. Him and him and Reedy have a system that works really well. It shows that they, as they've won the last six national titles, but uh, the relationships made and 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 memories that I experienced are are something that I'll I'll remember forever. Um, they they really set me on the right path so that I'm I'm prepared to take the next step and the the next step is here at South Dakota State. Thanks, Cody. What is it about Nick Mitchell's system at Grandview University? Tiny little Grandview University in Des Moines, Iowa. It ain't tiny, baby. They got two wrestling rooms. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, two, four, four mats in this room. It's mm -hmm. pretty, uh, pretty amazing. You know, I can't, I can't speak from experience of like how Nick Mitchell is getting these guys to, you know, go over and beyond what they're capable of. Like, based, you know, what I based off is interviewing, seeing how he interacts. Is he? 
instills that you have to be the best on the mat and off the mat. So that's where that grades with your family, everything, everything included. He, he really makes his athletes, he gets the best out of them when they're in, in school and when they're out of school. But here's the difference maker. You ready for it? Millboy, Jim Miller. He was, I mean, let's face it, Mitchell was his protege. Well, yeah, he's obviously took, had to take a lot from him, but, you know, at some point, some point Nick Mitchell's got to get out of that shadow. He's his own guy now. Sure. And I think, you know, he, as he starts getting more titles, just like Mitchell does, that, that shadow is going to come, you know, out from, like, Tom Brands wants to get out of Gable's shadow. So, I mean, these are, these are two guys in the state of Iowa that are living in shadows, but they're making big names for themselves. I'd be completely comfortable in that shadow if I was Tom Brands. All right, more college news continues after this quick timeout. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to our friends at Cookies Barbecue. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. George Mason University has announced the hiring of Frank Beasley as its new head coach. Beasley spent the past five seasons at NC State and helped guide the pack to four consecutive top 20 finishes and an ACC championship. As a recruiting coordinator, Beasley produced three top 15 classes, including the top-rated class of 2016. We're talking about one of the top young coaches in the country, Tony. This is a huge hire for the Patriots. You know, NC State has taken really a 180 since these guys have both been on campus. You know, Frank uh, wouldn't have taken this job if he didn't have the confidence. Right. You know, resources are a huge thing. You know, going away from NC State, that was that's a pretty big step for Frank. I mean, this is a school that has a ton of resources. If they get behind Coach Beasley, and I firmly believe they will, and invest in the team, George Mason is going to be a force. Well, when you talk to Frank, he said the athletic director has a big vision for wrestling, and, and you're – you're right. I mean, Coach Beasley, if he has the resources around him, he needs to get coaches around him as well that have the same mindset as he did at NC do. State. The money, money's everything, really, at the end of the day when it comes to recruiting. So a strong athletic director supporting wrestling, that's what Frank needs. It's huge, and they will do it at George Mason. Mark my words. Top 20 senior Will Lewin has verbally committed to the University of Michigan. He's a five-time Fargo All-American and won a cadet freestyle world title just a couple weeks ago. The Illinois native is ranked fifth nationally at 145, but projects out at 57 for the Wolves. Wolverines, Tony. He, he impressed me at the World Championship. He's he's a um, really high level wrestler, you know. But what really kind of looking at this Cadet World Championships, him committing to Michigan. I mean, where's Illinois on this? You can't let guys like this. I mean, Illinois wasn't even in his top five. Mm, one of his U.S. teammates is just right up the road. Could this help Michigan land David Carr as well? You know, I talked to, to Carr a couple weeks ago, and I think you know Michigan's not in his top five. He has Oklahoma State in there, Ohio State, Nebraska, and Iowa State. Cornell's in there as yeah, well. So I think ISU obviously is the favorite. He's got lots of family that went through that program. So, you know, but anything can change in this recruiting game. So that this is, you know, if Carr can you know maybe get influenced a little bit by Will, you never know. All right, another Big Ten recruiting news: two-time state champ Rocky Jordan has committed to Ohio State. The St. Paris Graham senior projects out at either sixty. Or 74, and we join fellow top 40 commits Gavin Hoffman, Jade Maddox, and Malik Heinzelman in Columbus. Not a big surprise, Tony. His older brothers are both All Americans at Ohio State. But what can you tell us about the youngest Jordan? 
Well, he's a two-time Ohio State champ for St. Paris Graham. I think the Hawkeyes think they had a, an in here, had maybe shot. I mean, obviously Ohio State, clear clear favorite here, but with Alex Marinelli on the squad as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it'd been hard to leave his brothers, Micah and Bo, both guys that have been you know, on the stand already. i, I got to believe that the Jordans are, are right up there in number one, two, or three as far as wrestling dynasties and families go. Well, current. And current is, is not even a question. You know, and, the, and as far as the family dynasties go, I mean, yeah, Micah and Bo, they came in fourth and second last year. His father, Rocky, Jeff Jordan, Jim, all these guys are all Americans. I, I don't think, think you can call him Jim. I think you have to call him Congress. <laughs> so, I mean, these are, these, this is a power, powerful family. I mean, you can go the Ashgrens, the Cars, the, the, the family uh, tradition. You know, it's out there, but this is definitely uh, on a coll collegiate level. These are, this is the family. All right, as part of the 25th Annual Beast of the East Tournament, the Delaware Wrestling Alliance and the NWCA have organized a duel between Ohio State and Princeton. The event is scheduled for December 15th and will also feature a women's freestyle bout and a club duel between South Jersey and the University of Delaware. Tony, you like this format? Anytime you can parlay an event like this that helps cross-promote, you know, college wrestling, women's wrestling, high school wrestling, you know, this is something you need to pay attention to. Sure. You, know, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of people that follow college wrestling that like high school wrestling. I'm not sure why it is because that's, I mean, that's where all your recruits come, but there's not a lot of people that know some of these high school household names. So I think cross-promotion is great for our sport. We need to do more of it. You know, in talking with Jessica Medina there uh, just yesterday, she's telling me that women's wrestling, total number of people watching women's wrestling live and in person is growing so quickly. It's amazing. The gyms are filling up fast. Well, they're winning. You know, they're winning. The cadet, junior, senior level were winning. So that is what is going to be driving those years. All right, Tony, we're out of time. For all of us at the Takedown Studios here in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.